Hello, I'm Roger Snell. Welcome to my video art journey. This painting is based on a photo I shot several years ago when Linda and I visited the Bilt Biltmore estate in Asheville, North Carolina. And I've done some uh, value sketches. I've done some watercolor sketches and a whole variety of things to kind of prepare for the studio painting and even then there are still mistakes or as Bob Ross said happy accidents that need corrected. In this video it's going to be the longer version of any of my previous episodes because I wanted to show actual stroke by stroke uh, corrections in this painting. Uh, what you're seeing now is the, the high speed version that led up to the point where I had one kind of funny mistake uh, that I needed to correct. And so we'll pick up with the stroke by stroke, uh, about a 20 minute version to show the corrections and some of the tips about uh, how to make those corrections. And one of the things I want to underscore is that it all comes from practice and learning from mistakes. No one is born with just the natural talent to be able to do this. Uh, as Vladimir Horowitz once said, somebody made the comment that they wish they could play the piano like uh, him. And uh, he said he devoted his life to it. He gave his life uh, to be able to play like that. So when it comes to painting, it's learning from mistakes, making mistakes, being willing to uh, take those risks and you can't help but look at water lilies and think of Monet. Monet planted uh, the water lilies, it did his garden, uh, put the little pond uh, in the yard of his home and uh, he painted those lilies for 40 years and left letters and notes about his frustration of trying and trying and practicing and practicing to get the light right, to get the colors right, to get the values right. And so if it took Monet four decades, uh, I'm not too worried about maybe a version or two or more to come on practicing to get these water lilies the way I want. But anyway, you'll see uh, the big mistake that needs corrected. You'll also see why I like oil. The advantage of oil is that it stays wet so you can blend, you can layer, you can wipe out and start again. And so stroke by stroke, you're going to see what I'm talking about here. I decided to show you some of this in live time. Uh, you know, the annoying child at the back seat on a trip that asks, are we there yet? Uh, sometimes asking that before you even get out of the driveway. Of course, I never did that as a child. Uh, I'm sure it was my sister's because I was the perfect child. But now I'm doing it <clears throat> with paintings of are we done yet? Are we there yet? With the end of the painting. And the advantage of plain air and outdoor painting from life is you only have an hour to two hours before the light changes and before I get tired. And so it's more expressive, it's quicker, and you don't really stress about it being truly finished or a masterpiece. It's just uh, your impression as quick as you can get it from outside. So there's a little bit of freedom with that. But when you do an indoor studio painting, it's really hard to know when to stop. And so my signature has been on this for about three versions because I thought I was done and then I'd find something more to tinker with and what I do is I put it in the living room where I can see it from my recliner and look at it and see if there's things that stand out and so yesterday's corrections uh, I thought truly finished this off but then as I was looking at it from my recliner yesterday, I noticed this looks like a turtle. 
uh, the lily pad with the bloom. But look at this. From a distance, it looks like a turtle. And uh, I've got to correct that. The other thing that is interesting about the view is the eye level or horizon line is really off the canvas, and that's kind of unusual. Usually, you know, you have like your horizon line is here in a landscape, and the sky's here, and the foreground, and all that's down here. Well, what this does with this really high horizon line is this one is correct, this lily where you're really seeing it kind of from the edge, kind of seeing it um, in a different way, you know, from the edge, not the whole thing. And then as you come down, this is correctly showing, you're seeing the top of the lily, lily pad. And so those are all right. And as I look, this is off. There's, there's three lilies here, but they need to be flattened. I need to work on that and try to flatten those. And there's a few others back here that need to be worked with to make them look flatter, to have the correct perspective. And then the final thing is, and this is the advantage of having worked outdoors and begun to see the advantage of real life where you can really see into the shadows and where you really see how a camera distorts things or lies. A camera finds the average of a scene and so when I shot a photo of this, it really makes this look flat and dark uh, because it's focused on the light and it closes the lens and, and so it makes dark things darker. Well, I knew that and I added a little color in here and didn't keep it quite as flat. But as I looked at it from the recliner, I thought, you know, there should be a reflection uh, from these leaves into here. There should be a little bit more interest and just a few patches of light or something uh, to get rid of just complete dark without contrast. So those are some of the things I'll work on. And I may, because of the length of the time to do this today, um, you know, I may spend about another hour on this. Um, I probably will cut this live video in segments to, to make it shorter and get rid of the tedious stuff. But anyway, are we there yet? Not yet. Not quite. Hold on. Got to get rid of this turtle. <laughs> what looks like a turtle. And in the process, I can try to flatten, flatten this out. Yeah, it looks better. See how it flattened the lily pad, made it lay down in the proper perspective. Now the flower stands up a little bit better, a little more noticeable. Doesn't look like a turtle. I'm hoping that your eye will go here first, kind of follow these blooms, and then go into the darkness, maybe come back around. At least that was the goal with the composition the photo the photo looks like this but it doesn't have uh, these extra buds here I did that to lead the eye so there's a few changes I made to try to lead the eye in the way that it needs to go for a good composition not quite moving mountains some people do some landscape artists will move a mountain uh, to make it good from a compositional standpoint, unless it's a known mountain where they have to kind of stick with the, the way it looks. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how to still have three lilies, but flatten them. Hope I'm not blocking too much. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. Get farther out on the end of the brush, so 
I'm not blocking as much. Top one looks flatter. I think I need a little dark separation in here between these to kind of make this one sit down. I'd love to hear comments when you see the YouTube video. Um, it really helps when you subscribe and especially if you click like it begins to expand the audience beyond my friends seeing this and actually getting it into the outside world. The way the algorithm works for YouTube is the more people who subscribe or click like, the wider the distribution. And so what happened with this last video, since I've done several of them now, it's beginning to expand and reach. And it actually went to 84 um, people I don't know which is good. I'd, I'd really like to see it reach more. But also I'd like to know in your comments, what do you like about the uh, video? Would, do you like when I keep it to three minutes, three to five minutes? Because this one's going to be longer. I want to show a little bit more of the process and a little more detail and also give a little bit of tips on how to do this, uh, encouraging people to give it a give it a try um, so if you like the tutorial part and, and would like more depth let me know if you like the short version that's fine too I, I just kind of want to give people what they like a little bit better. I think the back one needs to be flattened in back too to get this to look flatter. Like I say, the perspective of these distance ones, distant ones, is we're seeing them more from the edge and then down here you're seeing it from the top. And it's really something I didn't pick up on until um, the early stages when I was trying to finish and as I sat and looked at it, I thought something's wrong on the perspective. So you just by smudging that out and darkening back there, we help that to pop a little where the sun's speckling and hitting it. But also flatten it down a little bit. Need to flatten this just a little bit. See a little bit more of the top because it's a little closer to us. Definitely need to flatten that out. And after I get all this dark, all these dark spots in, flatten this out some. After I get these dark spots in, I'll go back in and add a little bit of color and not make it as flat and dark as the photo. I'm happy because I, I kind of did that right from the start knowing from outdoor painting that it wouldn't be as dark or as flat as the photo was showing knowing that it's flattening it out. It's looking pretty good on the perspectives on the lilies now, the water lilies. This was taken at Biltmore in uh, Asheville, North Carolina. One of the neat ponds that they had there and I love the outdoor tour the landscape and 
flower gardens and the roses and they have like a greenhouse with all the plants they would raise so they could keep flowers on the table even during the cold months. Now I'll get it to a point today where I'm satisfied and think I've got everything corrected. Then I'll sit in a lazy boy recliner and find more things. <laughs> So, are we there yet? I don't know. Maybe never. I think every artist feels like it's never done. They can always look at their work and find something more to correct. And at some point, you just have to let go. <laughs> let it go. And know that you've done the best that you can. And I like, I like this scene. I like that it has, you know, realism, but it also has... Um, abstract qualities to it and obviously uh, or well not obviously maybe if you haven't heard prior videos but my absolute favorite artist is Monet and the impression and all of that and the other thing that I've learned in reading about his life is the reason he kept painting the same scene over and over and over again was to get better and better to progress to do more with light and so I'm encouraged to paint some of the same same scenes over and over and be able to measure my progress see how I'm coming from time to time now the thing that jars me and I'm going to work in these dark spots anyway. The thing that jars me is this abruptly ends from dark and then you have this little bit of blue patch here. I like how it makes the flower stand out, but this doesn't look right. The shape just doesn't look right. So I need to make it more interesting. And let's try to lay a little bit of that blue in there. See what we can do in the dark spot to get some blue in there and make it look like a flow of water. Got to get some of the dark out of the brush here, clean it. Try to get some clean blue, a little bit of titanium white and cobalt blue hue. See what we got here. That looks a little better. This is a focal point, so we can go a little bit more saturated with that color and just a little more attention there. Boy, that really helped the lily pad. pad doesn't look like a turtle now. It sets it down, and that flow of light on the water just calls attention here. You've got a brighter saturation of color versus that. You got warm versus cool, uh, dark versus light. And that really is the key to a focal pointer to get your eye to go somewhere is dark versus light or warm versus cool. As much contrast as you can get. And in this case, it has multiple contrast. I think your eye still will go here because this is larger. It has that red color, but I definitely want it to end up back here. And so I really like how that is straightened out. Now let's try to add a little variety and interest in these dark spots. 
and uh, maybe a little bit of reflection, but let's go with a little bit more. I like that blue. Go a little bit darker on the blue as we get back here. Some of this area, let's kind of make it look like there's a bit of a flow of water here, or a little bit of a sheen. I don't want it to be too noticeable, though, because I don't want it to take away from the focal point, and so I don't like it. It's too blue. And the way to dull that down a little bit is either with a little bit of red, or in this case, I'm going to use a little bit of purple to uh, dull that down just a little. So it's not as obvious as the focal point. A little bit more. Purple will dull that blue down and also make just a little bit darker to go with the shadows and it gives me a little more depth, a little more interest in the back where you're not just seeing that flat, dark background. Whoops, got a little bit of white on the edge there. Put a touch of red in there. There we go, that's starting to gray it down a little bit. See how that is quieting down that blue. Not quite noticeable. Grays it just a little bit. I like I like that hint of purple in there. Let's do a little bit of that right in here. A little too dead. like the accidental ripples I'm getting with that little touch of white that's on the tip of the brush. Actually, it's a happy accident, as Bob Ross would say. It's giving me just a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of ripple. Uh, let's see. See what happens if we touch here just a little. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't want to call any attention up there. Some of this paint is still wet from yesterday, so I can still blur in some spots. I really think we'd see a bit of a green reflection in the water up here. Let's try to get a little bit of that. Maybe there's something reflecting here. <clears throat> now I'm not even using my reference photo. I'm just kind of looking at what would make this interesting. This needs to be reconnected just a little bit, and I'm going to have to use my yardstick to allow me to get up here close. But I need just a little bit more of a stem showing here. And I also think 
but it's moving the reflection to a different spot because I made that blossom a little bit taller. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> it's been a really productive time for me as we're all quarantined inside with the coronavirus. My ability to work from home is wonderful. I get all of my work done and then I'm free of distraction, mostly baseball because there is no baseball so there's no Reds to watch and that's just more painting time. But I have my energy and strength in the morning and so I'm doing this at 6 in the morning and then I dutifully keep track of my time and am at work just as if I was in the office and uh, when I take breaks or afternoon nap to regain strength I mark off my time for that and give an honest day's work. It's been a busy time with a lot of these farm families that need help and trying to find new markets with the loss of the restaurant business is really hurt. But depending on what it is you uh, produce on the farm has depended on the impact because people that had chicken and eggs are getting a lot of business and they're doing fine. But I've had more phone calls during this period of time than normal of people needing help. My job is to run the dating service for Kentucky Proud and link buyers and growers together. And so there's a great need on both ends right now. Okay, that reflection's a little too strong. I'm going to see if I can Bob Ross it here and blur it. Make it look like water across. And there we go. That's a little bit better. Maybe put a streak of blue across there. that fixed it. <clears throat> well I'm surprised. I think I'm happy with it after 25 minutes. I thought maybe it might take an hour. But as I say now we'll put this back in the uh, living room so I can look at it from my recliner and uh, see if we're there yet. Thanks for watching.